This is not part of my speech, but I just want you to know I got this smoking this hot wife out here. As I begin, I must first tell you that I'm a proud Southerner from Leesville, Louisiana. I am Hawaiian, and I'm humbled to be the first Kanaka Maoli to represent the people of Hawaii and the first Hawaiian to enter into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. I am a born-again believer through the resurrection of the blood of Jesus Christ. I am proudly and humbly recognized that without God's grace and his blessings, I would not be here tonight. I thank the Pro Football Hall of Fame selectors for the privilege to be on the stage tonight, specifically Gary Myers, Paul Kaharski, and John Clayton, who covered me when I played and who fought for me to be here tonight. To the men on the stage and those who are no longer with us or could not be here, I thank you guys. For it is you who laid the foundation of the game that I love so much and I wanted to be like you guys. Men like Dwight Stevenson, Mike Webster, Jim Motto, and Anthony Munoz. I studied you with the hopes that one day I could play on the same fields that you guys did, never once thinking of my life that I'd be a teammate for life. In many ways, today is the end of a journey that started 40 years ago, and yet today it signals the beginning of a new one that only God knows where this will take me. I have reached this destination today because of the people in my life who supported me from the beginning and who have been with me throughout my entire career. To my mom and dad, David and Linda Mawai. People always ask me who are my greatest role models and who do I look up to the most growing up. It was never a hard answer. It was easy. It's always been you. My dad was a career soldier in the U.S. Army, serving 23 years. During his career, he served two tours in Vietnam, one stint in Korea, two tours in Germany. Dad, I watched you take pride and putting on your uniform and packing your rucksack and taking care of your helicopters. You never cut corners and you never looked unprepared. You taught me that if it's worth doing, to do it right the first time and don't half-ass anything. You taught me to take responsibility for myself don't blame others, and if you aren't going to do anything about it, then don't complain about it. You taught me to never start the fight, but you taught me I better damn well finish it. You taught me the value of walking lightly and carrying a big stick, and those lessons are great lessons that I still hold values in my life today. Dad, I love you. I thank you. More than all of that, you're the greatest lesson and the greatest person that I could have ever had but Lord, Dad, the biggest thing you taught me was family. You taught me how to love your family. You taught me how to love my wife and to love my children. You're the greatest example of how it is to be a man that I could have ever asked for. Whether I stood on this stage tonight or not, just know this, I'm proud to be your son. <laughs> Mom, you were tough and you demanded the best out of us. I can't count the number of times we had to refold our clothes because every drawer was messy. As a kid, you got in trouble if the sheets were crumpled under the covers and we had to remake the beds countless times. If we ever feared dad when we got in trouble, we didn't have to worry about it because the punishment couldn't be half as bad as one you doled out before he got home. Respect and obedience was the expectation. You didn't let us off the hook, and I'm a better man for it. Raising four boys, you learned to take the bumps and bruises along the way. You were our other teammate with our odd numbers in front yard football. What other mom plays tackle football in the front yard with her sons? True story. She hit hard. 
But the most important thing that you ever taught me was family. To love and respect one another and to put family first. I'm here today because of what you and dad instilled in me from the very beginning. And I love you and I thank you. To my brothers, Scott and Mark, outside of my wife, Tracy, and mom and dad, you are my greatest fans and my largest critics. There wasn't a game that I won that I didn't walk, talk to either one of you right after the game. And the ones that lost, you guys were really quick to tell me how bad I played. Mark, for every Wampus Cat Friday night where we called before kickoff, and Scott, for every post-game critique, whether you're on the oil rig or not, you are my best friends. I love you, and I love your families. On May 5th, 1996, our brother was tragically killed in an alcohol-related car accident. Shortly after that news came that my wife was pregnant with our son, Kirkland. Those two moments changed my life and the direction and purpose of my life forever. In that extreme sorrow, followed by great joy, my focus turned to faith as I learned of the redemptive power of Jesus Christ and the purpose of living in his name. Whether it be through encouragement, wisdom, or resources, I learned that God can use one person to change the lives of hundreds and even thousands. My journey in football became a platform for the purpose of changing lives and sharing the gospel. My biggest regret is that our brother John never got a chance to see me play in the NFL and celebrate this night with us today. But I believe God has a special place in his skybox. He's looking down on us right now. John is not here, but he's never forgotten, and we love you. Phyllis and Carol Hicks, when it comes to in-laws, I hit the jackpot. I can never thank you enough for all the love and support and for all you've done for Tracy and I. Thank you so very much. To my kids, Kirkland and Abigail, being inducted and to the Pro Football Hall of Fame is a tremendous honor. But my two greatest joys are the accomplishments of you two. No football moment has ever equaled the days each of you were born, the two greatest days of my life. You each were answer specific prayers to have a son who's healthy and strong and to have a righteous and beautiful daughter. There's nothing, nothing you guys can do that will ever take my love away from you. I love you and I'm proud of you. <laughs> to my wife of 26 years, Tracy, there are not enough words that I can share with you or to tell this audience how much you have meant to me on the greatest journey that we've had together. Every training camp, every free agent visit, injury, surgery, every win, every loss, every contract negotiation, every home game and away games too, from LSU, Seattle, New York, and Tennessee, you have been my horizon. The landscape has shifted and the scenery changed, but you have always been the constant in my life and you have been my true north. God gave me a gift in you and you believed in me with or without football. You're my greatest fan, you're my greatest cheerleader, and you're my best friend. If the Hall of Fame ever needed them, if the Hall of Fame ever made a bust of what an NFL wife should look like, they only need to seek you. You are the epitome of a Hall of Fame wife. That was the hard part, I got through that. Webster defines a journey as a traveling from one place to another, usually taking a long time. A journey is full of lessons and full of memories, good and bad, and those shape who we become. My journey began at the age of eight in a small town of Hanau, Germany. It was with the Hanau Panthers that Coach Fred Moses ignited a fire in me that began the journey of a lifetime. At such an early age, I learned from Coach Moses the love for the game of football and how to respect the game. 
I learned to love the preparation, the plays, and the puzzle. I love putting on my uniform and lacing up my cleats. Coach Moses' rule was never to come through the gate without your cleats on and your attitude right. I learned to never step on the field without being ready to work. At 4 o'clock, even if Coach Moses wasn't on the field, you started practice. You start warm-ups. You run your routes. You go through your playbooks and go through your plays. And yes, at eight years old in flag football, I had a playbook. <laughs> it was on game days with Coach Moses that I learned how to, to prepare mentally for a game. He was the manager of the base movie theater. And on game day, he made the entire team sit in that theater, lights out, and mentally visualize what you're about to do and visualize the game. Run through your plays in your own mind. Think about what you're about to do next. And most of all, envision winning. I never played a game not taking that approach. Coach Moses, thank you for teaching me to love this game. For the very first practice, Coach Moses, I knew I wanted to play in the NFL. And who would have known that 40 years later, that journey would have brought me to Canton, Ohio. After four years of playing in Germany, my journey took me to Leesville, Louisiana, where my dad was assigned to Fort Polk. Nobody ever chooses Fort Polk, it just happens to choose you. <laughs> it's also called Fort Puke for some people, but it's okay. It is there that I played for the black and gold of the Leesville Wampus Cats. My freshman year, I once traveled with the JV team, and I didn't play in the game. I was so pissed. It was then that I made the decision I would never step on a football bus and not step on the grass. Not because I complained or threw a fit, because I had my parents call my coaches, but because I would work hard and do all I could, and that coaches couldn't not put me in next time. Coach James Williams from Leesville, that moment on the sideline taught me not only to believe in myself, but to earn what I believed in. Specifically, I want to thank my two head coaches at Leesville, Daddy Jack Andre and Brownie Parmley, and my offensive line coach, Tom Newbert. Each of you guided me and pushed me in ways that you will never know, and Friday nights in the Wampadone in West Central Louisiana will never be forgotten. To my teammates, my Wampus Cat teammates, to all the people of Leesville who supported me along the way, tonight I recognize you, I thank you, and you're going in the hall with me. While at LSU, we didn't see much success on the football field, but playing in the purple and gold will always and forever be a part of my journey. One of my first calls, one of my first calls upon election into the Pro Football Hall of Fame was to the coach who recruited me to be a Tiger. It was the greatest call that I ever made. When he answered it and I told him who I was, he started crying. He couldn't believe that I would call him on such the occasion. Joe Wessel, you believed in me. And I thank you. I want to thank Coach Mike Archer, who signed me to that 1989 signing class. You allowed me to continue on to fulfill a dream of a childhood, and I thank you. Coach Kenny Farrow, he's my first offensive line coach in college, and he is by far the best old line coach that nobody has ever heard of. I thank you for teaching me the importance of techniques and strong fundamentals of offensive line play. You taught me the game of football starts from the ground up, feet first. And just as my football journey has taken many steps, you taught me literally that offensive line play is built upon a thousand tiny steps. Now that I'm in the coaching ranks, I look back on how you coached us at LSU and what you meant to us. We were never just your players. We were always your boys. You taught me that if you love your players, they will return it with effort and execution. The relationship was more important than the coaching. You were the first coach you were the very first coach that ever told me that I had what it takes to play in the NFL, confirming in me what I always believed in my heart. And I will never forget that, and I love you, Coach. Larry Zerline, you were a godsend when you got to LSU in my senior year. Times were tough in those last three years, but you brought me perspective. You showed me that a coach doesn't have to degrade you dog cuss you and demean his players to get him to perform. I leaned on you in that last season and you challenged me to be a better player and a better leader. I'm thankful for that day and even today that I can still call you coach, but more importantly, that I call you my friend. Thank you and I love you. Throughout my NFL career, I had the opportunity to play for some great coaches with whom I still have relationships today. 
legendary Tom Flores, you will be on this stage soon. And I thank you for drafting me to the Seattle Seahawks and giving me the opportunity to play in the NFL. And you made my childhood dream become a reality. Many people thought Bill Parcells was crazy for paying the center what he did when I became a free agent in 98. I think this moment right now proves that Bill was right all along. Bill, <laughs> Bill taught me that not everybody gets treated, I mean, excuse me, Bill taught me that everybody gets treated fairly, but not everybody has to be treated the same. He never lets you get comfortable. I remember in 1998, we played the Kansas City Chiefs in Arrowhead and we beat the Chiefs. Everybody's boarding the plane, laughing and joking around. And those of you who know Bill knows what he does. He looks at me and says, hey, Mawai, what the, are you smiling at? <laughs> I didn't bring you here to beat the Chiefs. You better start thinking about how you're gonna block Ted Washington next week. He confirmed to me that the idea of what you did today what you did yesterday looks good today. You've accomplished nothing yet. Bill, I thank you for what you did for my career. I'll never forget the lessons I learned from you, and I appreciate you. Herm Edwards, you taught me it's okay to be you, to play with a passion that is individually inherent to your own personality, but not to the detriment to your team or to disrespect the game. I thank you for our time together with the New York Jets, and I thank you even now as I'm a member on your staff at Arizona State. Forks up, coach. <laughs> Jeff Fisher of Floyd Reese, thank you for bringing me to Tennessee. It was a great place to end my career. You saw me a leader and a culture changer. Thank you for believing that I still had gas in the tank. Every offensive lineman should hope to have the old line coaches that I had the privilege of playing for. Howard Mudd, you gave me the freedom to find my boundaries, even if it wasn't within Mudd's method. Howard's grading system was simple. Did you block your man, yes or no? And after 16 years in the league, Howard, I can still tell you that I had more yeses than noes. I thank you even now for your mentorship as I pursue my dream of being a great offensive line coach. Bill Muir, you taught me to see the bigger picture and not just to see my assignment. Under you, the game slowed down. I'll always be grateful for your, our time together, and I thank you. Doug Marone, you gave me appreciation for the history of the game and particularly the position that I played. You always explain the whys of scheme and the techniques, things that I never considered, and I thank you. To Mike Munchak, I'll always appreciate the game, appreciate your approach to the game. <laughs> respect your opponent, but don't ever give them too much respect. And it's not just good enough to be a pro, but be a professional in all that you do. As my career came to an end, I came to appreciate the stories of you when you came back from this very ceremony and what it meant to you as a Hall of Famer to be here. Today, I thank you for allowing me the honor of being your teammate for life. Thanks, Munch. <laughs> On an occasion such as this, there are groups of people who must be recognized. To my agents, Mark Bartlestein and Rick Smith, Dave Copeland, every one of you guys, and everybody at Priority Sports, you are first class. Early in my career, you knew my value even when the team management didn't. You fought for me, gave me second sound business advice, and you never steered me in the wrong direction. You allowed me to focus on the field while I trusted you off of it. That faith led me to the New York Jets and launched me into this Hall of Fame career. My career is over, but our friendships remain, and I thank you guys. While at LSU, I learned from the late, great Jeff Boss that the most important person is for all you young football players out there, the most important person in that building is your equipment manager. To all my equipment managers, your jobs are selfless and thankless. To JB, EK, Clay, Gus, and Haas, you and your assistants, I thank every one of you for being part of my journey. To all my athletic trainers, John Purdy, the late Jimmy Weitzel and late David Price, John Melody and Brad Brown, and all your assistants and your medical staffs, you always put me back together and you kept me on the field. I thank every one of you for being a part of my journey. To all my strength and conditioning coaches, particularly Dana LaDuke, John Lott, and Steve Watterson, each one of you taught me to buy in and to push myself to limits that I didn't know I could get to in the off season so that the regular season would be easy. I learned that the commitment in the weight room in week 16 was just as important as a week one in the spring. I know I had the career because of that emphasis, and I believe it then, and I even believe it now. Like John Lott always says, and I know he's listening, if you ain't cleaning and you ain't squatting, you ain't playing in the NFL very long.
<laughs> to my team chaplains, Carl Payne, Scott Matheny, and Reggie Pleasant, thank you for your spiritual guidance. Your unique calling to minister to professional athletes always gave me godly perspective, and I thank each and every one of you. In this group, I would be remiss not to mention one of my greatest friends and my personal pastor, Dino Rizzo. You married Tracy and I, and nearly every significant decision in my career was made with prayer and counsel with you. I thank you for your godly wisdom, and I'm truly, truly grateful for our friendship. To my family at the NFL, PA, the late Gene Upshaw, Clark Gaines, Jason Belcher, Scotty Graham, Richard Burleson, D. Smith, Georgia Tala, and everyone else at 63 Upshaw Place, you helped me to serve not just my team, but to serve every player in the NFL. If we were to write a book, I promise you it would be a bestseller. Though I played against many opponents who challenged me to be my very best, many of whom are here tonight, there's one coach in particular that I must recognize, Coach Bill Belichick. I see all the Jets and the Patriots, and there's a delineation right there. But Coach Bill Belichick, I never felt more challenged mentally in, in a game than when I faced your teams. I came to love the puzzle of figuring out your defense and the chess match those games became. I didn't win all of them. In fact, my teams lost most of them. I think we were four and 13 against you. That sucked. That was awful. Still hate the pages. Everybody hates the winners. But holding your defense to zero sacks or having big rushing games came with a great sense of accomplishment. Congratulations to you and all your successes, and thank you for making me a better player. Zach Thomas was my nemesis. My first year with the Jets before the first game, we each played against each other. Bill Parcells told me in front of my entire team, if you don't block Thomas, we won't win the game. And for the next 16 matchups, I never forgot that. Zach was one of, if not the smartest player I ever faced. He loved the game, had fun when he played, and he brought the best out of me. When people ask me who's not in the Hall of Fame and that I think should be here, it's an easy one for me, number 54 from the Miami Dolphins. <laughs> to my Tiger teammates, here or not, we had some very tough times. 89 through 93 were the forgotten years in LSU's football history. But we won't forget what we went through and we went through together and the challenges we faced. Know this, I will be forever LSU. <laughs> Go Tigers. Ray Donaldson, Jim Sweeney, Howard Ballard, and Eugene Robinson, you taught me how to be professionals as a young player. Vinny Testaverde, I will never forget you drawing plays on your chest during a game at Monday Night Miracle. You were one of the best, that's a true story. Hey Q, you run one of these and you run one of those, and Curtis, you do one of these, I'm gonna hit you there. You're one of the best field generals I ever had the privilege of playing for. Sorry, Warren, Moon, wherever you're at, there you go, sorry. You were good too. <laughs> You remain my all-time favorite quarterback. Thank you. Wayne Corbett, your underdog mentality, your work ethic, and your passion for the game made you one of my all-time favorite teammates, and I appreciated being your teammate, and I thank you. Curtis Martin, we will forever be linked by our time with the New York Jets. I know you're up here somewhere. Being a part of the year in which you were the oldest player to win the Russian title still stands out above all memories, but knowing you did that and your longest run of the season was only 25 yards still amazes me from behind Kirk. Jason Fabini, of all my online teammates, we played together the longest. If I had a dollar for every time you asked me to slide your way, I'd be more rich. For eight years, we, with the Jets, we accomplished many great things. We got oh so close to the Super Bowl. And I saw his face up here the other day. Early. If it wasn't for John Elway, you know, it is what it is. Thanks, John. Grant Williams and Rick Lyle. Our relationships go well beyond the playing field. I had over a thousand teammates, but you are two of my best friends and you're my brothers for life, and I love you both. Thank you, guys. Michael Scott, or excuse me, Michael Roos, Jake Scott, Eugene Amano, David Stewart, Algie Crumper, Ahmad Hall, Perry Collins, Vince Young, and Chris Johnson, and the rest of my Titans teammates. Who could forget CJ2K? You all helped make my last year one to remember. To all my teammates, if you're here, please stand up. All my teammates, if you're here, please stand up. All of them. Whether you're a Wampus Cat, a Tiger, a Seahawk, a Jet, or a Titan, 
know this, that each one of you holds a special place in my heart. We sweat, we bled, we cried, and we rejoiced together. Together we were miserable in the dog days of summer and training camp. We celebrated close victories and we commiserated miserable losses. You trusted me to do my job. You held me accountable on the field, and some of us did life together off of it. You were teammates, you were friends, you were my brothers, and I thank each and every one of you for being a part of my journey. We did this. Kevin didn't do this. We all did this. Thank you. The game of football is the greatest game in the world. There are few environments where a group of people of different upbringings, different backgrounds, different races, religions, and regions can come together and put aside every one of those differences for the common goal of putting the team together to win a game. And in that process, each one of us finds out about something of ourselves and finds answers to some of life's most difficult questions. Do I have what it takes to be the very best? Can I lose my ego for the good of the team? Can I bounce back after a major defeat? Can I continue on when I feel like shutting down? Can I respect the differences of my teammates and others and still succeed in a highly competitive environment? Can I work with others that I don't like just because it benefits everybody else and not just me? Am I willing? Can I give more of myself and I'm willing to sacrifice so somebody else can be successful? The game of football taught me accountability, it taught me discipline, sacrifice, and selflessness. It developed in me grit, tenacity, and confidence. It challenged my faith, it grew my loyalty. The corners of this great country and parts in between. The journey that encompassed many miles, many friends, numerous lessons, and a lifetime of memories. Today, that journey finally ends. Today, I stand at the doorstep of football immortality. I knock on this door and I tell all of you, I am home. Thank you guys very much. Thank you. What a beautiful speech by Kevin Mawai. His wife presents him. His parents rejoice. His teammates.